Hello everybody and welcome to our tier list of every single game that I play. Okay, I probably missed some, but I don't care. This is the main majority games that I currently know of that I've played. I know there are probably other ones, but I don't really care about them. And we got 36 of them, so that's quite a lot, and let's get into it. Basically, um, we're going to be ranking every single game from awesome to actual crap. It's not... This is... Please, disclaimer, this is my subjective opinion. If you like a game and I rate it shit, please don't attack me because, you know, we have different tastes. So everything is my opinion. Please just don't take this seriously. All right. So first game we got is Minecraft. Now, Minecraft, I'll put it in the awesome category. Even though, obviously, I don't really like Minecraft as much nowadays, I still regard it as one of the best video games in existence because, honestly, you know... Pretty much everybody has heard about Minecraft. There's a lot of limitless possibilities like sandbox and multiplayer. And obviously, we ha I had a lot of fun playing it back in 2021 slash 2022. Whilst, yes, I don't really have any more interest in playing it nowadays, it's still a pretty, pretty good game in my opinion. It's one of the best games ever existed. So that's why it's going in the awesome category. Next is uh, Mario Kart 7, which is quite interesting. I'll put it in the alright category. This one is a fine entry to the Mario Kart 7 series, but honestly isn't the best because the tracks are quite unique, but then the steering, the actual gameplay of the game itself isn't that good. Like this, you can't really... It's, it's a little bit fiddly at times, and all, the physics isn't as good as the other versions, and honestly it's just not the best game in the world, but it's fine to say the least. Mario Kart DS is going to be at a good. Now, obviously, it's an older game. Okay, I would say this. Older games are still going to be rated, like, fairly. It's not going to be about the visuals. It's also going to be about, like, the gameplay itself. So, visuals won't count. It, it, it could. It, it might, but not as much as gameplay itself. Mario Kart DS is pretty good. Better than 3D7, uh, in my opinion, because, firstly, the track selection is a lot more better, in my opinion. There's a lot more unique tracks. Secondly, obviously, everybody loves the drifting in that game. You literally only have to wait a millisecond before you can release the drift and get some boost. The drifting in that game is really fucking good. And, honestly, it's just a better game than D DS7, because there's a lot more variety. There's better items, like the fake item box. I don't know if... I don't think that exists in 7, but overall, I just prefer DS over 7. Uh, next, we got... Mar okay, we're going into the Nintendo section before I get to the Steam, whatever. Next, we got Mario Tennis Aces, and we'll put that at an alright, because <laughs> honestly, sporting games that are Nintendo-related just aren't really that good, in my opinion. Mario Tennis Aces kind of sucks in a way where, literally, you need no skill at all. You just smash about a... You just mash buttons and hope you win. Like, there's not really much skill involved. It's just, you know just mashing different buttons and while yes i do like the gimmicks uh the story mode is fine it's just too long and too overdrawn in my opinion the story mode is just kind of lame in my opinion and um, overall the gameplay just isn't that good it's an all right category because the visuals are not that bad it's actually really good the visuals Next is Super Mario Party. This one's going to get a good again because it's a pretty fine game. Yes, it is quite long in my opinion. Like the game lengths are quite long. But overall, it's quite varied in a way where it's quite different to every other Mario Party game that exists because there's new boards, there's new gimmicks, and there's new games itself. And I do like the other game modes such as the River Run and the Multiplayer and the Challenge Run. Those are pretty nice additions to the base game itself. So that's why it's getting a good. Tomodachi Life is another good because honestly, even though the game is a little bit repetitive at times and obviously it's quite easy to get bored of it after a while, the main gameplay and the main focus of the game is quite interesting. It's a lot more different. It's like The Sims, but for kids, in my opinion. It's like The Sims because you know, like you manage other people, like, you know, you get to see... I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it. But it's basically just The Sims, but for kids, I guess. And it's quite a solid game for that because while, yes... There's quite kitty elements in it. It's still quite varied in a way where you get to see literally all your bees. You get to create everybody. It's a bit weird, but yeah, you get to create everybody. You get to interact with them. And there's a lot of different options you could do. So that's why it's getting a good. And I had a lot of fun playing the game and I still enjoyed it. Super, so, okay, this one's getting out awesome because honestly, this game is one of the best games on the Nintendo Switch. Why? Because honestly, this is a very good uh, sequel to the original one. Even though the original one was good, this one is like five times better because the graphics have been improved a lot for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot more new gimmicks into it. There's the new 3D world 
thing, I guess. A lot of new parts for that. And there's a lot of possibilities you can do because Nintendo actually updates Super Mario Maker 2. There's new updates that include new items and stuff you could do. And well, yes, they did remove some of the gimmicks from the original, like uh, just double piping, for example. That kind of sucks. But other than that, it's quite good. It's pretty good. Uh, a lot has a lot of cool gimmicks, and that's why it's very good, in my opinion. Next is Overcooked. Honestly, I don't really know. Overcooked's getting a medium, because honestly, while the base game is quite fun, the difficulty charting in the story mode is just way off the charts, in my opinion. A story mode is only fun if you actually are able to play the levels. And honestly, Overcooked takes that to the extreme, because the story mode levels are so fucking hard at times that... And the gimmicks, well, yes, the gimmicks are cool. That's just over the time top. If you watch Overcooked gameplay, you can just see how nightmarishly chaotic everything is. Because whilst, yes, you are cooking, there's even more environmental challenges that exist. And honestly, it's just not one of my favorite games. The gameplay itself is fine. It's just way too gimmicky and way too confusing at times. Super Mario, okay, we're just going to put this here. I barely even play this game. But, you know, we'll just put it there through the videos, I guess, of other people playing it. It's a, it's an alright game. It's like a 3D platformer. I think it was the first 3D platformer in the Mario series. So that's quite cool, by opinion. But it's just getting good. I barely played it, so whatever. It's not really a fair opinion. Tell me, uh, no, Nintendo Land. Why are we going all Nintendo with first? It's kind of boring. Uh, Nintendo Land's getting in alright because you need friends to play it with. And I don't have friends that play Nintendo Land. Because who the fuck has a Wii U nowadays? But uh, yeah, it's just getting in alright. Because it's, it's basically just Super Mario Party. Except on the Wii U. And just not as good, in my opinion just nowhere near has the charm as super mario party oh uh, what's this one ds mario party ds honestly this one's gonna go good too the reason for this is because again there's quite a lot of variety in this compared to the other ones the mini games are quite good the boards themselves are quite unique in a way where there's just a lot of things you could do the story mode is fine it's it's just fine in my opinion but um another big problem with this game is just sometimes sometimes just doesn't make sense like some of the games don't make sense some of the games just are too difficult in my opinion i find it especially if you're playing like the 3v1 mini games those can get quite unfair at times because usually the, if you're playing with other people the one person always wins like it's basically impossible for the three people to win if the one person is somewhat capable of playing the game but other than that other than the unfair game advantage it's a fine game <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you don't know what this game is, I understand, because honestly, I only bought this game. Can I open? Let's open Steam for a little bit. Uh, okay, that's going to take some time to open. But uh, I only bought this game because it was $1.50 from the Steam store, and I just was bored at the time. But yeah, it's just a game. It's, it's just getting a not good, because I don't like it at all. It's a really shit game, and uh, it's, it, it's reflective of the $1.50 price. Fucking open Steam. It's reflective of the $1.50 price. Shut up, I don't want your Steam promotions. Uh, here we go. Yep, here we go. <laughs> I played it for 16 minutes for a video and never touched it ever again. City... Okay, yeah. Uh, awesome tier, awesome tier. Honestly, City Skylights is one of my favourite games. I have, like... Let's check. Uh, <laughs> oh, 801 hours in it. Why? Because literally... You can build whatever the fuck you want. And the thing is, though, it's a really good simulation. It's not just a game about building shit, but you can also literally just sit there on your computer staring at just the game simulating itself. With just car You can watch cars. And honestly, if you get mods for this game, the game will be a billion times better if you get mods. Like uh, camera mods, intersection marking tool, just traffic mods in general. You can With mods, you can basically have infinite possibilities in this game. And that's what I love about City Skylines. I played this... Uh, on the Nintendo Switch before, and honestly, I still had a lot of fun back then, but this this computer version compares nothing with the Nintendo Switch. I do agree, the DLC is a little bit expensive, but other than that, there's not much else to say. It's just a really good game, and I'm really excited for the sequel to come out. Getting over it is getting an actual crap, and I'm not going to elaborate on it anymore. Uh, Deltarune is getting a good... Uh, it's a fine game. It's, it's not that bad. Uh... Well, yes, honestly, I've got, I've grown out of it now. It's, it's out of my interests, but the story is fine. It, the story is a little confusing, but whatever. It's not finished, so maybe the story will make sense later on. But right now, I'm a little bit confused with the story. The gameplay is fine. The gameplay is good, actually, but the visuals can get quite overwhelming at times. So that's why it's only getting a good. 
PVZ, I'll give it a good also because it's a solid puzzle game. I did play it on mobile before getting on it on the computer and not touching it on the computer. But um, other than that, it's a pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good puzzle game. But the problem I have with the game is that it gets too easy sometimes in a way where if you just spam cattails everywhere or like the watermelon dudes, if you just spam them, then you can easily win any stage. So it gets too easy at times. But other than that, it's not that bad of a game. Mario Kart 8, not the deluxe, just a normal one, because I don't have the deluxe, is getting a good also. The reason why it's not getting an uh, awesome is firstly because obviously it gets a little bit repetitive, because I'm talking about the 8, the Wii U version, not the deluxe version. I'm talking about the Wii U version. It does get repetitive in a way where if you play all the tracks, it, it's pretty much finished. You know, you're done. You, you stop playing it once you play all the tracks. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And the online shit, so just don't bother playing it. But other than that, it's a really solid Mario Kart 8 game. Better than 7 because, again, it introduces a lot more new features like uh, anti-gravity and flying stuff. Uh, that was in 7, but flying stuff is better in 8. So whatever, take that out, you will. Uh, another... Shut up, friend. Hollow Knight, I'll give this a good... I haven't finished the game, and I don't think I'll ever will, but it's a pretty good game. Um... The reason why it's not getting an awesome is because the game can get quite confusing at times. Because it's a Metroidvania game. Uh, obviously, the thing, the problem I have with uh, Hollow Knight is that it's supposed to be non-linear, but also a Metroidvania game. What I mean by non-linear is that you can pretty much explore different places. It's just you get hindered a lot by different things because it's a Metroidvania game, for example. But uh, you get hindered a lot. There's a lot of block, a lot of barrier points that you can't get through. And just overall... It can, the gameplay can get quite confusing at times. And also the game's way too hard. That's just me, in my opinion. The game's too hard. But other than that, the vision, honestly, the biggest A-plus I can give it to this game for, the game, the thing that does better than any other game is the atmosphere plus the music. The music and the atmosphere that it gives me is honestly one of the best out of any game in existence. Like, literally, if you listen to this with headphones and you play the game, if you listen to the music with really good headphones, you'll be able to hear the atmosphere really well. That's the one saving grace I can give the game. Euro Truck Sim is a little bit unfair. I'll give it a good. Everything's getting a good. That's lame. Uh, I'll give it a good because uh, Euro Truck Sim is really fucking realistic in my opinion. Holy shit, it is realistic. Like, if you play this on the maximum graphics, oh my god, it looks like you're driving it in real life. I'm not even joking about that. And if you pair it up with an actual steering wheel, uh, then honestly, it is one of the most realistic simulation driving games in existence. The only reason why I'm not giving it awesome is obviously because the gameplay is repetitive. But other than that, Solid A plus in the graphics. Geometry Dash is getting it awesome for me. Even though I fucking hate the game and I rage at it sometimes, I still have to give credit because it's probably the most hours I've ever played because I played this a lot on mobile before getting on Steam. But honestly, the fact that you're able to just build whatever the hell you want is insane. It's basically Super Mario Maker 2 except for you get better possibilities. You can build more shit and there's a lot of things you could do. And even though 2.2 isn't coming out anytime soon, 2.1 is good enough for me. There's a lot of cool stuff in it already that I still haven't yet to explore. And honestly, it's just one of the best games ever, in my opinion. Parkitect is getting it all right for me. Few problems with Parkitect. Number one, the main problem I really have with it is just how finicky the the not really the gameplay, but just the mechanics. It's quite finicky in a way where just Barely anything wants to work in your favor. Literally nothing wants to work in your favor. The controls are a little bit wacky at times. Decoration can be wacky at times. Overall, it's just not that good of a game in terms of the controls itself. But other than that, it's a pretty niche simulation of a theme park. Planet Coaster, though, does it better. So that's pretty much why it's getting it all right. Stardew Valley, I didn't play for that long because I didn't really enjoy it that much. But I'll give it another all right. Uh, I didn't really see too much of the game because I just didn't really play it for that much. But other than that, Stardew Valley isn't that bad of a game because it does do pretty good on the story mode, I guess, and just the overall concept of the game. I just don't have that much fun with it. So, yeah, that's why it's getting it all right. Just Shapes and Beats is getting it good. But the thing with Just Shapes and Beats is that... um. Once you finish playing all the songs, then you just decide it's time to stop. Because once you do all the songs, you're pretty much finished with the game. You're pretty much finished and there's nothing else you can really do about it. So that's why it's only getting it good. But I do like the music and I do like the overall gameplay. It's just I wish there were more songs and a little bit more variety in my opinion. But other than that, it's a really good game. Undertale is getting a 
good. Now, with Undertale, it's practically just the same as Deltrude. The story mode is better, in my opinion, and it is a really good game. It's just the main problems I have is that hinder it from getting an awesome is, again, graphics is a huge issue in that game. Sometimes the game gets ugly, and I just don't like that. Another thing I have a problem with the game itself is sometimes it's get it, especially if you play Genocide, it's honestly just the most mind-numbing experience ever. But other than that, it's a pretty niche game. It's a niche game. It's a good. It's not getting it awesome because it's just not as memorable as these other ones. Okay, I don't know why I included this game. It's just getting a good. And I don't really want to elaborate on that because there's not much to say about that. Oh, Pink Man. Yeah, this game. This one's all... Uh, yeah, all right. I'm sorry. I'm giving it an all right. The, re the problem I have with this game is just the terrible controls on computer. The controls are terrible and it can't key map it. I don't think you could key bind it. But other than that, controls are terrible. But overall, it's a pretty cool game because even though it's just 2D platforming, there's other cool gimmicks into it like the floating things and wall jumping and you know, all that stuff. And the stage design itself is good in my opinion. The stage design is pretty good. But other than that, it's just an alright 2D platformer. These two are practically the same and going going nah. Why? Because they're puzzle games. And while yes I do kind of like puzzle games like uh uh what did I what's a puzzle game? Oh no uh, what did I say was a part? Okay, whatever. Fuck. It, uh, whatever. Uh, well, yes, it's a puzzle game. Honestly, it just gets boring almost immediately. Even though it's supposed to be like a chill kind of game, you know, the chill lo fi game that you play and you just have a little fun time. It's just too boring, in my opinion. It gets way too repetitive. And well, yes, I do like the gimmicks. I do like how the stage design changes a lot. It's just not a saving grace for just how boring and mind-numbing this entire game is. Just not that good. <laughs> Sonic All-Stars Racing is getting an absolute fucking shit had in the world. Why? Because this is basically Mario Kart 8, or just any Mario Kart game, shoving it with a bunch of steroids, making Mario look like a furry, then dumping it in a trash bin, because honestly, this game is one of the worst games I've ever played. Not a shit not the shittiest game in the world, but honestly, it just sucks. Why? The gameplay is absolutely abhorrent. What I mean by this is the controls are ass. I mean, not the controls itself, it's just the turning is ass, in my opinion. Literally, flo flying in the air is so hard to control and th th when you're on the water, too. It's so difficult to control. There's, like, barely any maps, too. There's, like, I think, like, six maps or whatever, and you just play them over and over again. And, honestly, the map designs are also not that good. The map designs are terrible because there's so many branching paths. It feels like I'm playing Sonic R all over again. There's too many branching paths, and just the stage design is not as friendly as uh, Mario Kart. At least with Mario Kart, there's usually only one or two paths. The turns are quite smooth, and it's quite easy to basically play this. Not with Sonic, though. Sonic has super intricate stage designs that are way too complex, too long, also, in my opinion, and you just get to hit every single wall, also contributing to how bad the controls are. The only saving grace that gives it over actual crap is because the graphics aren't that bad but that's only the saving grace here other than the graphics it's shit i just don't like it super mario maker is getting a good why it's just not as good as its predecessor and yeah it's just not as much gimmicks but obviously since it's a prequel to that it came out before that can't really say more than that uh, Terraria is getting it alright. I know a lot of I'm gonna upset a lot of fans here, but I just don't like Terraria. I don't play it. I, I just don't. It's fucking two D. Okay, it's not two D Minecraft. I know there's bosses and other stuff in that game, but it's just it's just not for me. But PD, I just don't enjoy it. I don't really enjoy it at all. So that's where it's gonna be there. I know it's it's not that bad of a game, but obviously people have different tastes. So please accept that. Homer Simpson Hit and Run is a really fucking old game in my opinion. It's like 10 years old. even It's like 30 years old. came out in 1990. But like I played the game in like 2010. So it's like 10 years old for me. It's getting a good because I have a lot of childhood memories of playing the game. Because it's not that bad of a game. I do like it sometimes. But like, yeah, other than that, it's fine. Like, <laughs> I don't really have a lot of... I have a lot of memories of just being absolute jack shit in it. But since I haven't played it for so long, I forgot what made of what the controls are, the gameplay itself. But honestly, it's not that bad of a game. Like, you can drive everywhere. There's a lot of funny interactions. And that's just all I can really say. 
Roblox is getting a good. I can't really say much about Roblox because it, it's just a game of games. It like, it, of course, every game on Roblox is completely different. So again, it's not really that fair to rate Roblox as that. But the only reason I can't give it an awesome is because it's too childish in my opinion. The fact that I can't swear, it's just it's too childish. But other than that, it's pro. It's just Roblox. Can't say much more than that. Brick Rigs is basically just a. It's a good. It's basically a. B B B M N G B G G what 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 that game called B G G that, that game oh fuck me what's that game B M N G yeah this game it's basically that game except if you have a terrible PC but um yeah it's basically just a uh, sad box game where you can just blow up shit and just do a bunch of crap it's a, it's an all it's an all right game so yeah and the last one is Don't Starve Together the most recent game that I play. Yeah, it's getting good. Uh, I can't really say much because, again, I don't have that much hours on the game. But other than that, it's not that bad of a game. I do like it. There's, But the problem I have with this game that, again, prohibits it from getting awesome is just the difficulty progression of the game. The game gets way too hard, way too quickly, in my opinion. Like, the game sends you so many different enemies, like Hounds, for example, and the Winter, for example. There's just a lot of shit that happened to the game that's way too difficult for a beginner because, again, there's, like, no beginner... There's no beginner hand-holding guide to how to live, literally. Like, you know, it's just too difficult for beginners. But, of course, if you know how to play the game, it's not that bad of a game. And that's pretty much it for my tier list, you know, it's, uh, I know that I probably missed a few games, but whatever, I don't really care, I probably missed some, but too bad, so sad, if you don't agree with any of this, then suck my dick, because I don't care, I don't fucking care about your opinions, bye nerds.